It's the Daily Dog. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Y'all, we have made it to Friday. It is the end of a week, and we deserve a Masterpiece Friday, and that is what I am delivering. And I'm going into the Daily Dog vault for a reaction that I uh, recorded on April 1st, on April Fool's Day, just earlier this year. And I was recording a full album reaction to Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd for my Patreon members. And so today, uh, now that it's a few months later, I am exerting the entire first side uh, of songs from that album. And I'm going to share that with you all today. We are listening to Speak to Me, Breathe, On the Run, Time, and The Great Gig in the Sky. And uh, I am happy to share that with y'all now. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's talk a little bit, y'all. Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd, their eighth studio album released in 1973, recorded at Abbey Road Studios. It was conceived as a concept album, focusing on the, uh, the pressures faced by the band members uh, as publicly known musicians, including mental health issues, uh, issues of conflict, issues of greed, issues of time, issues of mortality. Uh, so, uh, and it draws its, ti the title draws its inspiration from the mind, from going nuts, from lunacy, uh, and mental issues rather than on astronomy. So the dark side of the moon is somebody who's gone around the band altogether. Right, it is among the most critically acclaimed records in the history of records, um, <laughs> being including uh, included on many best of <clears throat> album lists. It's gone platinum fourteen times, and it charted. Guess what, y'all? It charted for nine hundred and sixty-two weeks on the Billboard charts. Do y'all know how many uh, years that is? Can you do the math? I, I plugged in a calculator. I needed a calculator for that one. That is 18 and a half years that this album was on the active Billboard charts. It's unbelievable. Absolutely incredible. And it is included in the Library of Congress's National Recording Registry. And that doesn't ha happen for just any recording. So... Uh, each side of the album is a continuous piece of music reflecting the various stages of life. So I, I guess we begin and we end with a heartbeat. Uh, and then along the way, we explore the nature of the human ex experience. Uh, lyrics by Roger Waters. Uh, David Gilmour is on vocals, guitars, and some synths. Nick Mason is on drums, percussion, and tape effects. Richard Wright on the organ, piano, electric piano, synths, does some vocals. Roger Waters on bass, vocals, and tape effects. Alan Parsons was one of the engineers, if not the main engineer for this. So uh, it's going to be absolutely wonderful. I'm really excited about it. And, um, you know, y'all, I've been kind of sitting on this one for a while because I knew it was inevitable. And especially now that we do the polls, uh, I knew... <laughs> I was pretty sure that if I put this one in a poll, it would win. And lo and behold, it did. And it not only won, it won over 50% of the vote in a contest between it and four other albums. So uh, it speaks to um, the importance of this particular recording. And um, I'm excited to, uh, to give you my thoughts along the way. And... Um, Let's get into it, y'all. This uh, first one is going to be called Speak to Me, and it goes like this. Here we go. There comes the heartbeat. Blocks. There's the sound effects for time. I've always been mad, like the most of us. Is somebody laughing? 
That note is a B. <laughs> and that's it. Wow. That is a, that. Uh, credit to Nick Mason. Uh, songwriting credit on that one. <laughs> I can't believe that somebody gets songwriting credit for something like that. Uh, fascinating. Um, <laughs> so the next one, we're going to go right into it, y'all. The next one is uh, what I guess this one rolls right into, and it is uh, Breathe in the Air, and the uh, songwriting credits on this are uh, Wright and Gilmore, and uh, David Gilmore does the vocals. Off we go. So it continues, the, that laughing becomes maniacals like laughing into this. E minor. A major, pretty sure. And then the opening then just becomes like an extended dominant introduction. Almost like a, um, like an overture. You know, here's some of the sounds you're gonna hear on this particular record. And they're talking about, I have the lyrics pulled up from that. I've been mad for fucking years, absolutely years. Been over the edge for yonks, been working me bones off for bands. I've always been mad. I've always been. Uh, people going through some shit. And that's pretty. Mm. Okay, so we're still in the minor. Cycle of life. Breathe in the air. Don't be afraid to care. Smiles will give and tears will cry. All you touch and all you see is all your life will ever be. Run. It's a cool way to get back to the E minor. Organ playing is pretty cool. So that goes to the four. That goes to flat six. The C, the C chord, down to B, down to an F chord, up to G, down to D, and then that's gonna go into the next one as well. Okay, I didn't realize how much this just kind of goes right in from one to another, but I guess that's that's how they built it. Um, I was just getting into groove with that one too. And so far I noticed not much in terms of solo, right? We're two songs in and it's just kind of, um, it's going right along. And this next one on the run is an instrumental and it's uh, credited to Waters and Gilmore. Here we go. So it cadences in E minor. That's a loudspeaker at a terminal. Have your baggage and passports ready. So they're on the road, living the life, right? 
running. So I hear footsteps going in. Various directions. If I have ever heard this, I have no recollection of it, y'all. That's an amazing effect. Just a st static chord. Low tone over here. Almost feels like I'm inside a Stranger Things episode. And that migrates over here, that low tone. Freaking with me. Live for today, gone tomorrow, that's me. That sounded almost like a violin, or it could have been a guitar. Like, stretched or done backwards or something. Just trying to figure out how they got that sound. It's an interesting sort of to sit mentally in the middle of this first side. It's almost like they had the intro and then those couple songs and it just kind of seeps into this. They're going nuts. That's what I get from that. run. Huh. Their music concrete uh, inspired uh, selections are among the most effective that I've ever come across in my studies and in my hearing it I'm, I'm being honest about that y'all it's um it's quite astounding and um i'll be darned and now we go into um what is next time all right y'all um i think i know this one so off we go I've read that all of the recordings of these clocks came from <clears throat> from Alan Parsons. And it's just an amazing feat of engineering. technique on the drums it makes them sound like they're far away
major four chord. They've done a f that on in this key previously on this side of this album. It's almost a prog meditation on these themes. Richard on the, the lead vocals for this one. No, the vocals are by Gilmore. Okay. That's Richard, I think. No one told you when to run, you missed the starting gun. It's about how at some point, you know, we come to this realization that, oh shit, I've been wasting my time. What am I doing? You know? Time slips away and we recognize it too late. Establishing F sharp as the home key. Goes to A, the three chord. Back up to F sharp. That's the D chord to A. Pretty. So it's switched to the major key. Now it's 4 to 1 in the relative major key. to try to make the most of it. You know? Every year is getting shorter. I have thoughts on that, too. that core progression. And that's going to hold over and I think go into a great gig in the sky 
which is going to lead us into the last song of this particular side. I'm just going to get this queued up here to make sure that I am on the right one. Very good. So <clears throat> I want to take a, a moment here to talk about this particular song. Um, just yesterday, I recorded the fan favorites video for March. So I'm recording this on April 1st. Uh, happy April, everybody. Um, and it's not uh, it's never happened that I recorded it, uh, a um, an extended play lounge episode like right after a fan favorites and the song that went to the top of our fan favorites I'm gonna get some water here mm. <clears throat> as as we were getting uh, close to do the the fan favorites video and I noticed that the great gig in the sky with the lead vocals by a lady named Claire Tory was by far winning our poll for songs that are sung by or written by women for our uh, March emphasis for our fan favorites. And when I saw Dark Side of the Moon was going to really win the poll to be the EPL, uh, I consulted a few folks and I said, should I really do this one on the fan favorites or should I wait for the EPL? They said, yes, you need to wait for the EPL, please. And so that's what we're doing. So, But I do want to take a second to talk about Claire Tory. Um, the al uh, uh, this I found from the Wikipedia article. I'm going to read it to you because I think it's interesting. It says the album's credits include Claire Tory, a session singer, and songwriter and a regular at Abbey Road. She had worked on pop material and numerous cover albums, one of which convinced Alan Parsons to invite her to the studio to sing on Richard Wright's composition, The Great Gig in the Sky. She declined this invitation as she wanted to watch Chuck Berry perform at the Hammersmith Odeon, but arranged to come in on the following Sunday. Interesting. Um, the band explained the concept behind the album, but were unable to tell her exactly what she should do. Uh, Gilmore was in charge of the session and in a few short takes on a Sunday night, Tori improvised a wordless melody to accompany Wright's emotive piano solo. She was initially embarrassed by her exuberance in the recording booth and wanted to apologize to the band only to find them delighted with her performance. Her takes were then selectively edited to produce the version used on the track. For her contribution, she was uh, then um, paid, uh, wow, 30 pounds, her standard session fee, uh, equivalent to about 400 pounds in 2022 dollars, it says. Uh, in 2004, she sued EMI and Pink Floyd for 50% of the songwriting royalties, arguing that her contribution to The Great Gig in the Sky was substantial enough to be considered co-authorship. The case was settled out of court for an undisclosed sum with all of the post-2005 pressings crediting Wright and uh, Claire Torrey uh, jointly. Well... That's interesting. So let's hear a great gig in the sky, y'all, uh, and finish out side one. Here we go. So that's B minor, and that's F major. Weird. B flat, just coming right out of that last one. F over A. That's the dominant, C7. Okay, back to two, to five. One major seven. That'll tug at the heartstrings. And four major seven. And flat seven major seven. Why should I be afraid of dying? Cool. There's no reason for it. You gotta go sometime. OK, 
Okay, so they went. They're still doing their minor one and their major four that they like to do. But it's in G minor this time. That's how they got to that particular. That particular area. It's been forever since I've heard this, y'all. It's like asking a vocalist to do a solo. They might put a guitar solo over this, right? Because it's just a, a, one, a minor G minor 7 chord and a C major chord, C dominant 7. I'm gonna try to. Oh. That was sneaky. Hang on a second. Y'all, I need to go back and hear that. I didn't realize that that happened. What just happened to me? Uh, I'm gonna start back here. There she goes. That's how they get back to B. Sneaky. And that's how they get back to the beginning. And if that's gonna... Yep. Goes to F major to B flat. An amazing piece. mortality and it's a vocalization of what, emotionally what that's like I never said I was afraid of dying is the spoken word there for a while and then something just catches you and you wail or you're catching right that's how humanity can just slap us right in the face It's, it's been quite some time since I've heard that, you all. And um, I think it was the right decision to, um, to, to wait and uh, in, include it in the context of this, of this um, 
of this album. Um, it's powerful outside of that context. Uh, but wow, just at, at, at the end of, of what we've just come through, um, I can see why she um, uh, wanted uh, and expected a songwriting credit for that. It was basically, uh, you know, a, a few minutes of her uh, soloing. Uh, Richard Wright wrote some wonderful little progressions. You know that that's part of it. Um, you know, but if Richard Wright wrote those prog uh, his piano and they had, um, I don't know, uh, a guitarist come in and and play a solo, um, besides David Gilmore, um, or maybe it, you know, I don't know, uh, name a musician that could come in and play a solo like that. And it was if it was that uh, focused on their performance throughout the piece, uh, I would I would as that musician expect a little bit of something, especially if the piece is kind of just that, right? I absolutely love doing these full album reactions on our Extended Play Lounge uh, that uh, we do over on our Patreon site. We do two of those a month, so if you like what you have heard and you want to get in on these as they are uh, as they are published, uh, take a look at our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Doug Helvering. Uh, we listened to the rest of the album, uh, but I'm going to save that for another upcoming Masterpiece Friday. So look for that soon here on the channel. Thanks y'all for hanging out with me and for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.